Hey guys, today we're gonna to run through the setup and handover for our Infinity range as they all have very similar features. Today we're gonna to do the start on the Infinity 13. What we're gonna do, we're gonna go in and pop the roof. Need to pull our step out, giving it a bit of an angle. Now with the Infinities, we always want to pop the front up first, followed by the back. And when we're closing down, we wanna pull the back down, followed by the front. So we're gonna pop the roof here, find it easy to put one hand on the roof, just pushing up. And what I like to do is put one of the clips through, make sure that it doesn't come down while I'm popping the other end up. All right, now we can go open the back. So we're gonna start with undoing our threaded locks here. So we've got two of them. Undoing our catches from the rear. One and two. Our dual wheels are on gas struts. Opening our rear locks. The T handle pulls back to the side. We do want to make sure these doors are both in the corners before we undo our locks up the top. Dropping down, nice and easy. And pulling over our rear door. Once that's open, locking down. And you can use padlocks if you want to leave sight, leaving it open. Once we've done that, we can shut our door again and wind the awning out. Once we're at about 500 and we can reach, we're pulling our legs out, popping the end out, dropping down, nice and gentle, opening up, sliding down, locking that in. Same on the other side. Popping that end out, dropping down. All right, then we can continue winding out, just putting the legs on a bit of an angle each time. If you're by yourself, chucking the legs out on a bit of an angle. We don't want to overextend, so we tighten it back in so that it can't slide in its little sail track run up there. I can see it at the moment. So we're in a nice and tight. Get our legs out, pegging down. So once we've rolled the awning out 2.4 metres, if we want to use the Grasshopper anti-flap kit, we're simply putting the head of the anti-flap bar into the bracket and then adjusting out and placing over the awning leg holder on the side. There's a little clip on the side. We space it out and lock it in so there's nowhere for that to move. We then have our vinyl cover clips that sit over top of the anti flat bar that roll on holding the vinyl into place there is four clips per arm we're just putting the three on for the demo when you're finished removing them off they just simply roll off Then we can undo our little knob here, sliding the anti-flap arm back and going directly down out of the bracket, making sure we stay clear of the awning guide. The Grasshopper anti-flap kit also has its sail track run so you can attach any privacy screen that you wish.
Now we can start to slide out the rest of our gear, our fridge slide. Pushing down our two latches, holding the handles and sliding out. Pantry drawer slides one more. Our tray table unlocking. Do remember as well when you do go to put away to pop the legs up. Don't just pull on it. Our pantry space. Followed by our gas stove. Pulling the latches, sliding out. The beauty of the Infinity range is the water is permanently plumbed. So we've already got the water hooked up. We just need to turn our pumps on or connect to mains water. Popping open with our four burner. Wind guards up. We can drop our legs down from underneath, pushing the release button, undoing our butterfly clips. And locking into position. At the rear of the infinities is where we'll find our gas line for our four burner with our double bayonets at the rear. Taking the dust cover off, finding on the locator, push and turn the lock into place. You've got the second bayonet there so if you brought a baby Weber or another barbecue with you, you can attach it in the second one. At the rear as well, we've got our little accessories light here. We can plug that in there. We've also got a 240 volt GPO and a 12 volt socket. The last piece of the four burner is our little Constantine pipe for our sink. So this is the only part not hooked up to the gray water. So we're a Constantine pipe into a bucket. We also have our little prep bench, which has its own little stabilizing leg which we can slot in underneath. When packing away the kitchen area, we want to put our travel covers on so that none of our stainless gets scratched if any of the hot plates come off. Fold our wings back up and over. Folding down. Bring our little light down. Don't forget to unplug that light as well. And we just slide that back in. Tap down. Dish rack down. We can put our prep bench back in. Taking the leg out from underneath. Sliding in and storing your leg away. Our legs underneath, undoing the clips, sliding up, locking into place, and then putting underneath as well, locking that in. We've got our two at the back, our Constantine pipe, making sure that's all been drained out. Nothing else left in it. And our gas hose into the bayonet. Push and turn and putting our dust cover on. Can feed that back up, just end to end. Back in. Everything's tucked up and away. And slowly slide our four burner and sink back in. Nice and slow. Locking in, handles down, and locked away. The Infinity range comes fitted with a kick-ass shower tent. So we can undo the shower tent that's mounted to the side, undoing the straps, letting it drop down. What we can do then is peg down, adjust the straps to our heights. We have our outside shower. Can adjust between our hot and our cold, get the temperature that we want. We can then enter the shower 
on the side. And hooking up. Just attaching the shower head up top. When packing away, simply undoing our shower head up the top. Packing away inside the shower box, making sure we've got all our water turned off. Locking away. Finish with our kick ass shower tent. Folding one of the arms in. Folding the second one in. Making sure we've got our straps sitting over the top. And just rolling up. The toilet cassette in the infinity range is the Thetford, has its own separate filler. What we need to do is remove the cap. You'll be supplied with two sample chemicals, one for the flush water, the second for the cassette. Flush water one's going in the filler, we're filling up, it's going to be a pressured fill. So we need to put a little cap on the top so we've got a bit more range. Feeding it in. We've got our gauge on the side to watch our water level, so we're gonna feed in 15 liters of water there. When it's full, cap off, cap back on. This one hides away, ready for use. Now, you will not get signaled you've run out of flush water, but you will get signaled time to empty the cassette. On the toilet inside, there's a little red light. When we uh, get signaled, coming outside, sliding the toilet out nice and easy if there's ever any resistance go inside check that the toilet chute hasn't been left open coming back outside toilet shuts itself on the way out we're taking that out wheeling away to where we need to go taking our cap off don't forget your other cap that's sitting on top Aiming, pushing the button for the airline, releasing out, giving it a clean out, applying some more chemical in, cap back on, ready again for use. Now be before we slide it away, we do have a bit of storage in under the cassette, which you can keep some hand sanitizer, gloves, maybe even some of the chemical for the toilet. Just make sure they do go back in before you put the cassette back in. Sliding in, ready again for use. The Infinity range has two water tanks that are 120 litres each. When we're using these, we're taking the cap off. We're using food grade hose and a filter before feeding the water in if you're wanting to use it as drinking water and I recommend sterilising the tanks. If not, it's just a food grade hose in, filling the tanks, 120 litres, Cap on, rear tank, cap off, 120 litres. Inside, you can switch between the tanks, which we'll go through when we get inside the van. Otherwise, if you're at a caravan park or you have a supply to town water, we're simply taking off the little dust cover. We don't need any water in our tanks. We're bypassing those and the pumps. Little male threaded fitting in, connecting up here. Our mains water inlet is fit with a pressure regulator, dropping the pressure to 50 psi so it won't blow any of the lines inside the van. When we're switching between the tanks, that's located under the little seat in the infinities. So what we need to do is go down here where the pump is. We have a handle to switch between. Now on the little gauge here, we've got a F down the bottom for the front tank and an R up the top for the rear tank. 
So we need one of the arrows pointing at the tank. So at the moment we have an arrow pointing down to the front and one into the pump. Okay, so that's telling me we're on the front tank at the moment. Gauges are up the front. Now, when we're running out of front tank water, all we have to do is switch the handle down. Now we've got one pointing at the rear and one into the pump. So now we're working off the rear tank. Under the bed of the Infinity range is where our DC to DC charger are, our AC charger, and our 2000 watt AC transfer inverter are fitted, along with our batteries, depending on whether you get the three AGMs or the lithium, and our hot water system. The DC to DC charger will be set for your battery type, with channel two taking the input of the solar with 400 watts on the roof, plus an additional rear Anderson plug for solar input. Channel three, is the front Anderson plug that'll take the feed from your car. We have our AC charger here, which is our 240 volt charger. We are plugged into the power point that is underneath in the battery compartment. That's always left on so that as soon as you plug in the mains power, your battery charger will start working. That will also be set to what type of batteries you have. The 2000 watt AC transfer inverter is an inverter that will work through all power points in the van other than the power point under the bed and also the air conditioning unit. The AC transfer inverter will show a little green light when plugged into 240 volt main power showing that the power transferring through the inverter is mains power so the power points can be used at a higher wattage. When we are off grid we simply need to turn the inverter on by pushing the power button that will come on the digital display. It's gonna show us what the battery level is at. At the moment, we're sitting at 100%, 13.5, and it's showing us an orange light showing we're working off the batteries there. You can push select, which will then give us a reading of 0.00, .00 so that when we use any of the GPOs throughout the van, we can watch what wattage we're pulling and making sure we're not using that 2000 watts or more. If you do plug in an appliance, we have our RCD safety switches here that may trip if you've plugged in a faulty lead or a too high wattage appliance while using the van. They'll simply trip. We can reset them just like the house ones at home. Do be mindful though, the inverter itself also has a safety switch located on the back of the inverter. Exactly the same as the RCDs, it does need to be reset. When you are finished using the inverter, make sure you do turn it off as it will still draw power even when in standby mode not being used. Our battery compartment has our 240 volt GPO in here. One plug in there will be your 240 volt AC charger. The other will be the hot water system. We also have our 60 amp breaker for our Anderson plug. So that's protection from your car feed into the DC to DC. We need to make sure that is left on. And then we also have a 12 volt circuit breaker underneath as well, so that if any surge comes through the line, the power is gonna trip here. You can also isolate the power when storing by simply pushing the button and turning off all power. Making sure when you wanna turn it back on, flicking the toggle up underneath. The Infinity range is fitted with the Truma 14 liter ultra rapid system, which is a 240 volt and gas system. When using 240 volt, it is plugged into the GPO under the bed we're simply turning on and an element is heating up the hot water. It's automatic and will reheat as the cold water enters. When we are finished with it, do make sure you turn it off so that when you get home and you're charging your batteries, you haven't left that on, either cooking the water left in it or if you've drained it out, burning out the element. We, when we use it on gas, what we need to do is turn the gas bottle on, remove the cowl cover outside and then we've got our little switch down here for the Truma Ultra Rapid. We've got 70 degrees down, in the middle is off where we are at the moment, and 60 degrees is up. So we simply need to flick down or up. We'll hear the system light, trying to light. Now, first time when lighting, we may get a little fault light, which is a red light down here, generally telling us gas hasn't hit in time. So what we need to do is turn it back off, wait, reset. Hearing it click, trying to light. Now, if you get three faults in a row, it's time to start troubleshooting. All we need to do is one, check we haven't forgotten one of the steps. So we've turned the gas bottle on and there's plenty of gas in the bottle. 
Second, we must check that the cowl cover has been removed. If this hasn't been removed and gas has built up in there, for safety it's not going to light and we need to leave it to vent out. There's no point sitting here flicking the switch each time, it's not going to make it get any better. So we may as well go do something else, pull out the kitchen, another step before we wait for the gas to vent. When we are done with the hot water unit, it is a stainless tank and has no anode, so Truma recommend when storing for a long time, we need to drain that 14 litres out. What we need to do there is there's a little yellow tab underneath in a horizontal position. We need to lift that vertical underneath. That would backfeed the 14 litres out of the unit onto the floor or into the bucket you've put underneath. When you are finished draining it out, make sure you just flick that back over or the next time you turn the pump on or into mains water, all the water is going to dump out underneath. The infinity range control panel is the same throughout with the infinity 13 and infinity scape located up the front up high and the infinity 15 bunks down below. What we have is our three gauges. We've got our front tank, our rear tank and our grey water tank. We've got a digital display of the batteries which at the moment we're at 100%. Our volt readout of 13.5 and our amp reading at the moment we're drawing 2.6 amps. We have our power, so that will isolate all power. So when storing, the same as the 50, this 50 amp breaker under the bed, we can switch that off, no power coming off the batteries. Our next switch over is our fridge. So that's providing power out to our fridge circuit. So we definitely want this on while traveling. Um, that will allow us to have the fan on in the fridge compartment and also the fridge working away while we're driving. Our sockets, light is obviously controlling all our sockets throughout the van and also the fans that are fitted. Our lights is controlling all our lights. We've also got our switches that will individually turn them all on and off. But this is the main override up the top here. Pump is our pump. So we're turning that on when we're off grid. Otherwise, if we're in mains or town water, we don't need to turn this on at all. And then DVD TV is controlling our TV unit power and also the radio. We also have our little resettable breakers up above so that if something does trip, we'll notice that the light's out on it. We can simply reset. If it keeps tripping, the problem's isolated. Otherwise, it'll reset and we're back in use. The Infinity 15 and Infinity Escape come with an internal sink and a two burner cooktop. To ignite the two burner, we turn on the gas knob and push the piezo igniter and same on the other side. When you are finished using it, you do need to wait 15 minutes before shutting the lid. You do have a little extraction fan on the roof as well. You can get plenty of ventilation throughout the top PVC and on the door also has a vinyl press cover you can remove. <laughs>